Welcome to episode two of four on virtual production with BNH. I'm Steve Giralt here at the garage, and we're gonna do really fun things today because today is demo day. We actually get to break down for you how this all works. And we're gonna try to keep it as simple as possible because this could get really complicated really, 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 really quickly. So there's a lot of technology here, but at the end of the day, remember, we're only doing this for one reason, and that's to tell stories, right? So step one to this process, no matter what you have going on, is what do you wanna create and why? For us, today is about garage water. We wanna talk just about it in real life. You know, this is once again a demo just to kind of give you an idea. And it's also a great candidate for virtual production, right? Because we have this beautiful thing called reflection and refraction that happens with liquids where it reflects everything that happens behind it in the scene. And that's really hard to fake. Our story is gonna involve the camera move, moving around, I'm gonna be in the scene and I'm gonna be enjoying water. It's gonna be really fun. For this, we chose this beautiful airport. We love it. Uh, we could, we'll play with the time of day and we're gonna play with all sorts of settings later, but we love this kind of feel and the scale of the airport itself. Then the next part of our story is that I'm sitting somewhere at the airport and I'm waiting for my flight, I'm eating something maybe. We chose to put a few tables here. You know, basically that was the next step, was designing the background and then designing the foreground. Then we aim our camera at it, put our light lenses on our camera, and we'll light it and we'll kind of make sure that it feels real or as real as possible, knowing that we aren't in a real world um, anymore. So with that being said, we're gonna dive into all those little sections a little more in detail in just a moment. And, uh, you know, stick with us. So here we go. So let's talk about lighting inside the Unreal scene itself. As you see here in the Unreal scene, we have all the control over the lighting. As we kind of scrub through our scene, we could change the light angle, we could change the clouds, we could change the you know time of day. So even the light is coming down lower, it's gonna become like more of a sunsetty time. You know, and we're like, whoa, we could get this like beautiful magic hour and we could stay there all day long if we want, right? Like this is the scene we want to capture and maybe our whole feature film revolves around this one magic, beautiful moment. The lighting in the foreground, we would tweak to make sure that they all tie together perfectly. But the control is infinite, basically, and unreal as far as where your sun is, what the time of day is, the warmth, the texture, all those things. So it's pretty awesome and something for you to play with. Let's talk about robots and what's called motion control. So here at the garage, we have a range of different motion control robots because we're doing a lot of really close up macro, really extreme high speed precision work that the robot does really, really well. Trying to handhold the camera and do a really smooth movement around something like this is not necessarily the easiest thing to do, especially in this case with this demo, we're actually using the repeat run so that I, I could actually sit in different places and do the exact same movement multiple times. The main reason we're using motion control is A, it provides our tracking data to the Unreal wall for us, and then B, it also lets us do multi-pass where I could be in multiple places because it runs the same move over and over, exactly the same every time. The other cool things about robots, they will control the focus, the iris, the zoom on the camera. They even could do run stop. It could do a full control. So as one person, you know, operating the robot, suddenly you're the AC, you're pushing the dolly, you're, you know, you're doing four people's jobs in some way. Once you have it programmed, it's like, boom, run it and it does its thing. So we'll run the robot real quick and you can see this camera move that we programmed. So right now it's, it's actually pulling focus. It's moving the camera and it's so buttery smooth. It's so nice. And it doesn't have to be. Like you could actually do shaky moves. You could do handheld feeling moves. You could do all sorts of different types of moves on the robot based on your creative you know, choice. So one thing that's important to consider when you're choosing your camera lens choice for a virtual production is the fact that you know, how big is your wall, right? If you have a pretty small wall, you don't wanna be putting a, you know, 16 millimeter lens on your 35 camera, right? So you gotta really think about, you know, how much you're gonna see, and the longer your lens, obviously, the more room you have to kind of keep the compression and keep everything kind of nice and tight. So here we actually have a 60 millimeter macro lens. Uh, it's actually a Cook full frame uh, S7 macro on our Red Raptor XLX camera. 
So they're working together beautifully. We're shooting at 8K, which is all the Ks you might ever need and in raw format. Uh, but with that, the raw format is really great because it lets us have a little room for color grading later as well, as we'll show you in the last episode, so that you know really want to be able to modify the color just as if we were at a real location and you want to kind of maybe rich in the blues in the sky or things like that. Then let's talk about f-stop for a second. So if we're at f-16 on the lens, chances are everything's going to be pretty sharp and we run into the problem of getting moiré on the wall. Moiré is it's when two patterns, which in this case is the pattern of the sensor. So all the little dots that make up your digital sensor and all the little dots that make up the LED wall line up and kind of like intermingle. You'll see it actually with window shades sometimes that have a really tight pattern that you'll get all these like swirly movements and overlay patterns. Moiré is not a good thing, you know, and it is truly something you, you have to fight in virtual production sometimes, especially for working really close to the wall. You know, things to get rid of Moiré is basically lower f-stop, you know, shooting at, you know, 2, 2.8, f4, you know, being a little further away from the wall with your subject. So, you know, just here I'm about 8, 10 feet away from the wall versus being four feet away from the wall. Obviously, you know, if I'm trying to get a full length portrait and my wall's not that big, you know, those are things that you need to weigh and decide if working in a virtual production environment actually makes sense or not for the shot you're trying to capture. It's, it's really all about giving you the most amount of flexibility and also, you know, to keep you within the bounds of your, the size of your wall and the amount of movement you want to do with the camera. In this particular situation, we chose the Red Raptor XL X camera. They love X's in their name because it has these amazing features. Number one, global shutter. Most shutters out there are rolling shutters, so they actually read out your sensor and make the image by making a bunch of lines that kind of scan together. Versus a global shutter actually shoots the whole wall all at one moment in time because in this case, the wall is also a form of a rolling shutter where it actually is displaying the image on the wall also as a rolling shutter. So there's the chances that those two rolling things will be out of sync with each other and you'll get what's called tearing where you, when you tilt up and down sometimes that you'll actually see the lines that are falling apart on the wall because it's not refreshing fast enough. So a global shutter camera is really great for that because you're gonna, as long as you sync it up right at that one moment, like boom, you got it no matter what you're doing with the camera movement itself. This also specifically has what's called the phantom track uh, capabilities, which we'll go over a little bit later, which lets you see uh, two different scenes simultaneously, which is like mind blowing. And then when considering the Red XL versus the Red regular Raptor, the thing for us as big professionals that have lots of people on set, we need lots of video feeds and connections and time code and all this stuff is it has all these ports built into it that make it really easiest for to connect tons of cables into the camera. And obviously, since we have it on a robot, we're less worried about the weight of the camera itself. All right, so warning, this might hurt your brain a little bit because it's kind of a crazy idea right here. So let's talk about Phantom Trek. Phantom Trek is Red's terminology for the camera's ability to capture two simultaneous video feeds of two different things happening at the same time. So basically what that means is instead of shooting at 24 frames a second, this camera is shooting at 48 frames a second but it's alternating with uh, talking to our computer over here and our master clock and all our bits that we've covered, changing what's on the wall in between those frames, right? So imagine it's just as simple as A, B, A, B, right? So on the first track, it shoots one background, then in between those frames, the background switches to green screen in this example, and now the next capture is a green screen background. Then it could switch back to the other background, back to the other background, and we kind of just do that back and forth, and then the camera itself could actually feed you two separate video feeds showing you one that has green screen, one that has the regular take simultaneously. And it could do this actually at any of the frame rates that the RED camera could do. So, you know, we could shoot 240 frames a second, so therefore two 125 frames per second timelines on Phantom Track at 4K on the RED Raptor. You know, but when you're in it, it's very strange, right? Because technically the wall itself is blinking so fast in between the green screen and the other world, the unreal world that we have up here. So it's a little kind of crazy to be around. As we'll show you in the demo here, it's, it's really could be very useful just to have that green screen pass in your back pocket, just making keying people out a little easier. Um, it's just really kind of a fun tool to have 
Um, we could, we've done even crazier things where, you know, we're actually jumping between two different unreal worlds. So, right, imagine of a daytime scene and a nighttime scene happening simultaneously. So as we get into the post-production episode next time, we'll kind of talk a little bit more, more about Phantom Track and its uses in actual real life productions and how cool it can be. So now that we actually have our Unreal World up and running and the camera's here and our lights are kind of set, a uh, really important thing is to basically virtually location scout, which is actually really fun. Now that you see here, basically we could go move up and down this terminal. Right now we're kind of at the bar by the gate over here and these uh, meta humans are looking angry, waiting for their drinks and their flights but uh, I'm gonna have Tommy move us through the scene a little bit and find our spot. So Tommy, can you move us through a little bit? All right, so as you see, we could kind of go through the terminal and oh, that's pretty busy. Maybe a little more, like let's see, go, go a little further, you know, and I could say, oh, wait, maybe we went too far. And we had to come back a little bit, a little bit more, a little more, uh, yeah, a tiny bit, maybe get a little bit of that sign in there. You know, oh, there we go. So something like this, and let's say, boom, this is where the camera is gonna live in the virtual space. And now I can move around my foreground production design to kind of tie these things together. So, you know, as we mentioned, this is the idea is this is you're sitting, eating a snack, having a drink before you get on your flight and you're waiting at the airport. So we could arrange the tables and chairs and lamps to fill that frame appropriately. That is everything that goes into a scene. Um, and this is actual physical production design. And there's also what's called the virtual art department or VAD for short. Our actual production designer, I'll have a conversation with them and say, hey, you know, we need layers of depth so that it feels really authentic, right? Because the real world has all sorts of layers of stuff happening. If it was just me standing or sitting at one chair in front of the wall, it wouldn't have the same impact as having multiple layers of chairs, multiple layers of lamps, even this little tree over here for fun, uh, just to add as much extra um, to the scene itself. So it's something really important to consider, you know, in the ideal world, I love to have one layer, if possible, ahead of the featured item, talent, whatever it is, and at least one layer behind them in the real world, and then obviously more layers inside the virtual world to make sure you have lots of layers of parallax, and that's really gonna give you a lot of impact as you start moving the camera, even just the slightest bit. So production department, virtual art department, all have to come together when you're planning a shoot to plan what our location's gonna look like, because remember, this is, none of this is real except for, you know, these tables. Um, I am programming the focus on the robot. We already went through and programmed the move itself. And after you do the move itself, you go back in and you do your fine focus to make sure that your focus pulls happen exactly what you want them to happen. And we are shooting uh, at a four on this lens and it's a 60 macro. So, you know, there's not a whole lot of room for focus fall off, especially how tight we are. So that's why I'm very thankful to have robots that pull my focus for me very, very accurately. Um, and then for this demo, we're gonna be doing day and night at the airport simultaneously. We'll basically be using the ghost frame feature uh, phantom track on the red and uh, going between day and night on the wall and with our cream source lights we'll be going day and night with the lighting scenarios simultaneously and the robot is going to be moving very fast for this move because we're shooting at 240 frames a second which would be dual 120 frame a second timelines when using phantom track all right robot moves fast Ooh, okay, there you go. All right. I might need to move that. Well, I, yeah, or if I open up the stop to 2.8, I think it might be enough that you could see it really big, the, the grid of the, yeah. It's actually not even more, it's just the pixel. Uh, you could actually see the grid of pixels right there. Um, eventually we start moving. Oh yeah, I see the plane moving, so uh, here we go. 
Oh boy, a little shaky. There you know, stabilization. The focus looked good there. Yeah, the Unreal World if we have to render out, so that's going to be better. That feels good there. <laughs> and there you are. All right, roll camera. Yep. Go ahead and cut. Let's do one more like that first. Roll camera. And action. Mmm. Okay. So that was fun, right? I hope you enjoyed the demo and we broke down as much as we could for you in the short period of time that we have. Obviously, this is just the beginning. Virtual production is a journey. You know, you didn't learn how to do real production in a day. Thank you for joining. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being interested in this because it is it is honestly very fun. And there's a lot of possibilities for the right filmmakers to leverage this tool to tell really great stories. So look out for the next episode where we're going to go into image-based lighting, IBL. And it's going to be a lot of fun. We're really going to break down the lighting here in detail and show you the power of image-based lighting and how controllable it is. And then after that, there'll be one more and we'll, our little journey together will be over. But, you know, we still have a few more weeks together. So I look forward to seeing you next time.